So Huawei has just launched its latest flagship tablet, the MatePad Pro 13.2 over in Dubai. Unfortunately, I couldn't actually make the launch because it's the same day as my daughter's school nativity play. Free trip to Dubai or watch a few dozen school kids absolutely murder away in a manger. It's a pretty obvious choice, right? But Huawei very kindly sent me a MatePad Pro 13.2 ahead of time to test out and review. And this sleek looking tablet bore some stunning design, impressive performance, long lasting battery life and some rather nifty accessories. So let's have us a gander and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, what is in that box? And why do they make these boxes black? Because they get all smudgy and nasty. Well, you've got a shiny black rectangle, which is the MatePad Pro 13.2. You've got yourself a Huawei supercharge adapter. You've got a USB cable. And hey, that's absolutely everything. If you do want the S Pen stylus or the keyboard cover, you'll have to buy those separately. So let's start with the design and perhaps unsurprisingly, the MatePad 13.2 sports a 13.2 inch display. So it's a bit bloody big. That said, the front end, it consists of 94% screen space. You've got teeny weeny bezels, just a fleece tint over three mils, plus a wee notch for that camera shenanigans. But do those skinny bezels bulk up the screen responsiveness when you're clutching the tablet? Well, more on that in a bit. And the MatePad Pro 13.2 is also delightfully skinny, just 5.5 mils thick. And as you can see right there, the camera bump is barely a bump as well. So as you can see there, only a tiny bit of rattle when you're using this tablet on a table. Around back, you've got a glass fiber arse, which is both impact and scratch resistant. Apologies for all this gunk. There was a sticker on there, which of course left all of its residue when I yanked it off. It's not exactly overly keen to come off, so I'll have to give it a proper scene to later. And this right here is the golden black hero color, but you can also grab the MatePad Pro 13.2 in a greedy color in select regions, but I believe not here in the UK. And sadly, there's no dedicated water resistance on the MatePad Pro, unlike, for instance, the fresh new Samsung Galaxy tabs, but this tablet is at least splash resistant. It's not always if you want to be doodling out in the rain for whatever reason. And this tab also weighs just 580 grams, so pretty easy on the old biceps, even though it's a 13.2 inch behemoth. Now, if you've used a Huawei device in recent years, you'll know what to expect from the software side. It's good old Harmony OS. Oh, Jesus Christ. Navigation's certainly nice and intuitive if you've used the likes of Android, because you've got the apps tray down here. You can drag down your notifications. And if you swipe from the right hand side, you've got your control center, kind of like iOS. To download apps, well, your first stop is always Huawei's App Gallery. Not quite as fully featured as the App Store or the Play Store, sadly. There are quite a lot of gaps here still. Although for anything you can't find, you do have good old pedal search. Just type in the name of any app that you can't find in that app gallery and it'll pop up some options from the likes of App Parks, APK Pure, etc, etc. Just be careful when downloading APKs. Make sure they come from a legit source and they come recommended by other users. And you can download as merrily as you like because you've got a choice of 256 or 512 gigs of storage space. Although you can't bung in one of Huawei's proprietary memory cards to expand that storage. And likewise, there's no SIM support here. It's Wi-Fi only. And with all of the apps that you download from the Huawei app gallery, you can run them side by side in little windows, change up the aspect ratios. I'm sorry, that was that is really freaking me. I'm going to get rid of that. They're super easy to resize and move about the place. You can also shunt them away out of sight and then drag them back out again when you need them. As I say, all intuitive stuff. However, you can't resize all apps. And also when you go into the multi-app menu, it does kind of make things a bit cluttered at times with apps appearing on top of other apps. And as you can see here with Netflix, which I downloaded using Petal Search, there's no option to get that in a floating window. You'll just have to run this in the background and then kind of have other apps on top of it, which isn't quite ideal. And if you happen to own other Huawei gear, like a smartphone or a laptop, for instance, where you've got that super device connectivity. So you can use this to, for instance, run your phone apps here on the tablet screen as well, side by side with your tablet apps, just makes things nice and easy. Now, if you purchase the magnetic keyboard dock accessory, this adds a kickstand to the back end of the tablet as well as the keyboard itself to transform the MatePad Pro into a makeshift laptop type thing. And this, I've got to say, I really, really like. As you can see, those keys span the entire width of the board, so no wasted space. 
They're proper physical keys. You've got 1.5 mil of travel and they're proper clicky feedback. So it feels comfortable and satisfying to type on. I found I could get a decent touch type and speed up when I needed to. And you've got all the keys that you would possibly need. Got a bit of function key action providing lots of quick shortcuts for changing up the screen brightness, the volume, toggling on various features. And I really like how you can detach that keyboard like so, and then just rest it in your lap or stick it wherever you like and continue to use it. And that's particularly handy if, for instance, you're stuck on a train with a tiny little pull-down table -y thing. You can just rest the Huawei MatePad Pro 13.2 on that and then have the keyboard on your lap. And still continue to reply to your emails, type away, do whatever. What I have noticed is that in some apps such as notes here, if you're typing really fast, well, sometimes the final letter in a word will be missed off like in rather and whipped. But I am testing out and reviewing the Huawei MatePad Pro in an early state pre-release. So hopefully just an early bug that will be squashed before it goes on sale. And you've also got a generously sized touchpad on this keyboard dock if you don't want to use the touchscreen for whatever reason. And you've got full multi-touch capabilities. And overall, got to say, it's better than some touchpads I've used on fully-fledged laptops. And also sold separately for those who want it is Huawei's third-generation M Pencil Stylus. This can be handily stored away on top of the tablet when not in use. That will also charge the M Pencil. And it's a pretty strong magnetic connection. This thing's not going to come flying off by accident unless you properly twat it. And even then, see... And this uses Neolink, which is an incredibly sexy short-range wireless communications technology. And this serves up the usual highly responsive pressure-based sketch and shenanigans. If you actually had any autistic abilities, you'd probably appreciate it a lot. Zero latency as well, so perfect for your sketching, your scribbling, whatever you're up to. You've got a virtual button here on the groove where the pen can connect to the tablet. If you double tap that, then you can, for instance, quickly and easily flip between sketching and erasing. And if you drag the stylus tip down from the top right corner like so, you pull out a brief menu, which allows you to annotate or take snippets from whatever you want. So you can scribble and sketch on documents, do whatever you want. Now the Huawei MatePad Pro 13.2 unsurprisingly sports a 13.2 inch display. It's Huawei's X-True panel with a 2880 by 1920 pixel resolution. And the reason they branded it X-True is because it's reasonably true to life. Get quite accurate colour reproduction here rather than boosted tones which you get on some devices like Samsung tablets. Nice crispy contrast as well, so natural looking visuals all around. Full HDR10 stream and support. And on the maximum brightness, this display hits around a thousand nits roughly, so pretty good at counter and glare if you are using it outdoors. Got the usual eye care shenanigans, of course, the likes of blue light filters to make it an easy on the eye experience in the evenings. And it maxes out at 120 hertz refresh, so silky smooth when you're skimming about. Of course, you've got to be slightly careful on how you clutch the Huawei MatePad Pro because your thumb and your palm flesh can intrude on that display because of those super skinny bezels. And I have found that sometimes I'll pick up this tablet and for a little bit it'll be unresponsive, but then after a few seconds it'll seem to figure out that this is just my pan flesh intruding on that panel and it'll be absolutely fine again after that. And that's certainly a relief, so you know I'm to come up with new and original ways to hold it. As for that audio, well, the Huawei MatePad Pro 13.2 boasts a six-speaker setup with four custom woofers and dual tweeter design. When you max out that volume, this tablet can hit over 80 decibels. Let's boost up the volume, see what we're working with. Now, most people should be as happy as a pig in premium quality fecal matter with the cheaper Pixel 7a, which is practically a plastic version of last year's Pixel 7 flagship. So as you can hear, pretty powerful speakers when you max out that volume, they pump out some serious audio so you'll easily be able to hear what's going on even if you're working in a busy kitchen, frying up some goodies, lots of clattering pans and everything, no worries. And the audio quality stays strong even when you max out that volume, the clarity, respectable, decent bass in it as well. So what about the camera tech? Well, the MatePad Pro 13.2 sports a 16 megapixel front face and selfie cam, plus a time of flight sensor next to it as well, so it can be used for face recognition. And that works really, really well. Even in a pitch black room, it can pick up on your mug and unlock your device. And that's really handy that it's got that face recognition because there's no fingerprint sensor here on the MatePad Pro. 
And I found this tablet is fantastic for Skyping, no worries whatsoever. You've got mics built into it, which clearly pick up on your voice, even when you're well across the other side of the room. And Huawei has built in some noise cancelling AI shenanigans as well. So if there's lots of background noise going on all around you, it can dampen that down and just concentrate on your voice. And for some reason, Huawei has also slapped a pair of cameras on the back end of the MatePad Pro 13.2. It's got a regular 13 megapixel shooter and also an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle effort. I guess if you want to scan a document or something, it could be quite useful, but please, dear God, just don't be out and about in the real world using a tablet to take photos or, God forbid, shoot home movies. As for the performance, well, the Huawei Mate Pad Pro 13.2, powered by that Kirin 9000S chipset. So absolutely no worries if you want to play absolute banger games like Bus Driver Life. Now, oh, this is quite a dramatic opening. I wasn't expecting this. All right, somehow the pilot managed to land despite the fact the plane is literally exploding. When do I, when do I get to drive buses? Objective, well, your guess is as good as mine. Why is there someone just lying here dead on the grass? What kind of crazy city is this? As I'm ramming all these cop cars, they don't seem to be too bothered, actually. You gonna, you gonna arrest me, mate? Oh, frowny face. <laughs> Could you please drive a bit more cautiously? These are the politest passengers in the world. Who gave your a driving license? Oh, can you run over pedestrians in this? Oh, yes, you can. And he's dead. Congratulations, you murdered someone. Here's a thousand points. My sample of the MatePad Pro also came with 12 gigs of RAM, so yep, flawless performance. And you've got a stainless steel vapour chamber packed in there for cooling, plus graphite layers and other heat dissipation measures, none of which are really needed for bus driver life, that's for sure. As for the battery, well, Huawei has managed to cram a over 10,000 mAh capacity cell into this skinny but sizable frame. And I found that from my first few days of using the MatePad Pro 13.2, this will deliver around 10 to 11 hours of mixed app use from a full charge before it's completely drained. Of course, if you are using the cameras a lot to do Skyping or Zooming or something like that, for instance, well, that will drain the battery faster for more like sort of six hours, which is still very respectable. And as with the OnePlus Pad, I found that the battery drain is pretty much non-existent when the tablet is hibernating, so you don't have to worry about powering it down after every time you use it. And this Huawei Tab supports 88 watt charging, so it only takes a smidge over an hour for a full charge, even when it's fully drained. And that right there in a tasty wee nutshell is the fresh new Huawei MatePad Pro 13.2. Now I don't have the official UK pricing or release date at the time I shot this video because it was ahead of the official launch, but hopefully I'll be able to bung that in the video description down below for you. It'd be great to hear your thoughts on this bad boy, so definitely let us know in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all the usual YouTube bollocks, and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!